Hello, I'm so glad you clicked on this video. I appreciate your curiosity for the incredible world of the small molecules that create us. Let's learn the basic differences between the DNA and RNA in this video together. I will try to make it as easy as possible. Let's start with the structural differences. First, the obvious. DNA has two strands connected with the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases. And it's longer. And RNA has a single strand. And it's shorter. This makes the DNA molecule more stable, and RNA has its functional groups more exposed, making it more reactive, and it can also degrade much faster. Now that we know these three differences, let's continue with another obvious difference. According to their complete names, deoxyribonucleic and ribonucleic acid have a slightly different sugar component. Let's zoom in on a tiny section of one of the DNA chains. So the backbone consists of alternating sugar and phosphate. If we focus only on the sugar, which in DNA is deoxyribose, we can notice that on the second carbon of the ring, it has a hydrogen. This is why the sugar is called deoxyribose, because it does not have oxygen. On the other hand, if we zoom in on the sugar in the RNA, on that same carbon, it has a hydroxyl functional group, OH. So it does have oxygen, which actually gives the extra reactivity and instability of the RNA as compared to the relatively stable DNA. Now let's discover two more structural differences, which are luckily related, so it's easy to remember them both together. In DNA, one of the nitrogenous bases is thymine, and instead of thymine, in RNA, there is uracil. So in DNA, we have the nitrogenous bases adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine, whereas in the RNA, the bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. And these two bases are structurally very similar. The only difference is that there is a methyl or CH3 group in thymine which is not found at the same location in uracil. However, the parts of uracil and thymine that are responsible for the complementary binding of adenine are identical. This means that adenine found in DNA complementary binds to the thymine in the opposite strand, and adenine in RNA can complementary bind to uracil. But wait, didn't we mention that RNA is single-stranded? Well, this is related to an interesting feature of the RNA that I will discuss in a couple slides, and you'll see what I mean. Let's now move on from these structural differences we covered, and let's see the functional differences between DNA and RNA. You must know that the DNA stores our genetic information. However, it is slightly less known that RNA holds the information for the building blocks of the proteins, called amino acids. Each three consecutive nucleotides contain the information of one particular amino acid. I explained this in more detail in my genetic code video. And we're here. A couple slides later, as I promised, I will explain how uracil binds to adenine in RNA, despite being single-stranded. Basically, the single strand is not usually as linear as you might have imagined. Some of the sections may become curved due to hydrogen bonds between complementary sequences within the same RNA molecule, and this creates a three-dimensional structure which gives some of the RNA molecules an enzyme activity. Yes, not all enzymes are proteins. Some are actually RNA molecules known as ribozymes. Lastly, the DNA can replicate itself in a process called, well, DNA replication. <laughs> And RNA is created using one of the DNA strands as a template, so it is not self-replicating. And we're done! Here I made a summary table for your convenience, and you can use it whenever you are in doubt, and also as a quick reminder right before a big test. Thank you for watching! Feel free to ask questions in the comment section, and subscribe to the Biotech Girl channel to get notifications on my future videos. I will see you in the next video! Bye for now!